Hi, I'm Bill McCarthy. I'm the assistant principal here at Arlington High School. And we're going to take a quick tour of a science classroom in order to gain a little more information about why we need a new building. So if you take a look around this room right now, this, see, this has 17 desks. A typical science classroom is anywhere from 24 to 29 students. As a matter of fact, this science classroom had 29 students in it just last period. The students end up having to sit at the desks in the back, the tables, which is primarily their lab component. The state of Massachusetts typically has science classrooms with a square footage of 1,400 feet. This classroom is 800 square feet. And so our goal is to actually, as we build a new building and pursue that, is to get larger science classrooms that can forward uh, development of science and STEAM education for all of our students. The other piece of this, beyond the educational, is the actual construction of the building. If you take a look, we have the equipment that we have is actually very outdated. This is dating back to 1980, when was the last renovation of this building. Um, so we're talking 40 years ago. There are columns in the classrooms. So out of nine out of the 12 classrooms, there are columns. And also, you'll notice that there are sections that are just coming onto disrepair. Up there, there's a section of the ceiling that has significant water damage. Um, and that is the case in most of our classrooms in this hallway because of issues with the structure of the building. Um, beyond that, when you look at this space, you'll notice that the lab spaces are actually very small, confined, doesn't really give you an opportunity to move around. And part of the reason that you want larger square footage is because when you're working on a lab, say I'm working on a lab here, I'm going to have another student right behind me working on a lab. And this is a chemistry classroom where they're going to work on such things as gas, acids, uh, fire will be involved. And so having someone right behind you is going to cause difficulty when you're actually trying to have an interactive science lesson. The other piece to keep in mind is the technology aspect of the classrooms. The Wi-Fi, this building designed 1980, did not have Wi-Fi in mind. And so trying to get a Wi-Fi signal in this room is very difficult. And we cannot put a projector in the ceiling because the ceiling is about 20 feet high and given the design, we cannot put a mount into it without damaging the roof. And so what ends up happening is we have projectors on carts or we don't have projectors at all. So in this classroom, there's a projector over there that we wheel out during class and we have to move the desks in order to project to the wall. As we look at the classroom, um, many of our pieces still functional but are from the rebuild of the 1980s. So this is a safety hood that we usually use to get air out. Um, still functional but you know very outdated. Same with this wash hood. Um, these are systems that really could be updated. Uh, one thing we want to emphasize is that our science classrooms, we have 12 of them. We're looking for 17 from the MSBA. The reason for that is our classrooms now are at about 85 to 90 percent capacity. Usually you want them about 80 percent. Um, now that's on average. There are some classrooms that are used every minute of the day. They have teachers and students assigned to them uh, throughout the day, throughout the week. And what we're trying to do is gain additional classrooms not only to satisfy the demand right now where we are falling short, but our classes are going, our enrollment is going to grow. Uh, expectations are about 300 to 400 students and we don't have the space to accommodate them at this time.